The following apparatus is used for the tractation of a dilute alkali with a dilute acid and we are given a balance equation and 7.1.1 says what type of a reaction takes place when an acid is added to an alkali an alkali is basically a base right so we have an acid and base reaction so 7.1.1 .1, uh, acid and base reaction uh, another name for an acid and a base reaction is neutralization right so you can write acid and base or you can write uh, neutralization now let's move to 7.1.2 which says that write down the name of the dilute alkali so the acid is h2so4 right uh, which is basically sulfuric acid ba is barium right and then oh you usually pronounce it as hydroxide right um if you remember if we have naoh this would be sodium hydroxide right so this will consequently be barium hydroxide so here 7.1.2 we have barium hydroxide 7.1.3 says name the pieces of apparatus labeled x so here's x here uh, you should be familiar with x at this point of time right x is a burette uh, it's essentially a glass tube right uh, with readings on it and it has a turning plug here right uh, to control uh, the amount you're putting in on your beaker or whatsoever you're using so 7.1.3 uh, we have a burette and then 7.1.4 says uh, methyl orange is used as an indicator what will you observe in y when the acid is added before the end point is reached is reached so before we add any acid right you are going to basically have a base right if you add methyl orange to a base then the methyl orange is gonna turn yellow so what we are going to observe between uh, before the end point is reached is that uh, the methyl orange uh, turns yellow and then as we add more acid it will gradually turn to orange as we reach a ph of around seven and then if you keep on adding more acid and now the solution actually becomes acidic then the methyl orange will turn red so for 7.1.4 um, the methyl orange uh, turns yellow uh, because we add it into a base and uh, gradually turns orange And if you keep adding more acid and your solution becomes acidic it will consequently turn red and then 7.1.5 says state whether each of the following increases decreases or remains constant while the acid is being added before the end point is reached so back to the basics what's an acid an acid is a proton donor so when we increase the acid we increase in h plus right uh, so what will happen to ba uh, to the two plus right uh, we won't have any effect on ba to the two plus when we increase uh, the acid right so ba two plus will remain constant right and then what will happen to OH minus? The concentration of OH minus will go down when we add H plus. Why am I saying that? So before we started adding the acid, right? We just had uh, BA OH2 giving us BA uh, to the 2 plus plus 2 OH minus, right? so when we add the acid h2so4 uh, the ba2 plus will react with so4 2 minus and then the oh minus 
uh, will react with 2H plus. So the more we add the acid, uh, the more the concentration of OH minus decrease, right? Uh, because OH uh, plus H is uh, clearly uh, H2O. So here for OH minus uh, is going to decrease. So for pH, uh, we know that the pH is equals to minus log of H plus. Uh, the more you increase the concentration of H plus, uh, the lower the pH will be, right? So as we increase H plus, the pH will consequently decrease. And then now we can do 7.1.6. 7.1.6 says that uh, during the reaction, 50 centimeter cube of the dilute alkali reacts completely with 30 centimeter cube of the dilute acid. So the dilute alkali is reacting completely. That tells us that the dilute alkali is our limiting reactant, right? And then the question goes on to say, uh, calculate the mass of barium sulfate uh, that will form during the reaction if the concentration of the dilute alkali is 0.1 mole per decimeter cube. So we have the dilute alkali, BA, uh, OH, Two, right and then uh, we given the concentration it is said to be 0 0.1 mole per decimeter cube and then we are given the volume which is said to be 50 uh, centimeter cube so if we find the number of moles of BAOH then we're gonna be able to use those number of moles to find the number of moles of uh, barium sulfate, right? And from the number of moles of barium sulfate, we'll consequently be able to find its mass because that's what the question is asking us to do, right? Uh, so here we're gonna have, uh, the concentration is equal to the number of moles divided by the volume. If you make the number of moles a subject of the formula, you get concentration multiplied by volume. So what's the concentration? The concentration is uh, 0 0.1 and uh, what is the the volume? The volume is 50 centimeter cube, right? But we deal with uh, decimeter cube. So here we're going to have 50 uh, divided by a thousand. So 50 divided by a thousand. Um, so we basically have uh, 5 divided by a thousand. Uh, which will be close to uh, 0 0.005 moles, right? So if we go back to our equation again, uh, the balancing coefficients, we have 1, 1, 1, right? So the number of moles are basically equal for all those three that I just indicated there. So the number of moles of uh, BaOH2, uh, will be equal to the number of moles of uh, BASO4. So that will be 0 0.005 mole, right? Now we can calculate the mass of barium sulfate. We have the number of moles and the molar mass, we can get it from our periodic table. So now uh, we know fully well that uh, the number of moles is equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. If you make the mass of the subject to the formula, uh, you get number of moles multiply by the molar mass. So what is the number of mole? What we just calculated, right? So we have um, 0 0.005 uh, multiplied by the molar mass of uh, barium sulfate. Uh, if you add uh, the molar mass of uh, barium and uh, SO4, uh, that will give you 233. So 233 multiplied by 0 0.005, uh, that is 1.165 grams. So the mass of the barium sulfate that will be formed will be 1.165 grams. Um, I hope that is clear. Uh, let's just recap for the last time. Uh, we're given the concentration and the volume of um, dilute al the dilute alkali or barium hydroxide right which was used and then we figured out that it's our limiting reactant right uh, because we are told that it reacts completely so from there 
uh, we find the number of moles of the alkali, the dilute alkali, and we use those number of moles to find the number of moles of uh, the barium sulfate, right? And from the number of moles, we calculate in uh, the mass here, right? Uh, high school chemistry is basically finding the number of moles of one reactant and using it to find uh, the number of moles of the other and from there you'll find either the concentration or you'll find the mass and then 7.2 says two test tubes contain solutions of nh4 uh nh4 plus i think and ch3coona and uh, their ph values are less than seven and greater than seven respectively write down the following hydrolysis hydroly rewrite the following hydrolysis equation in the answer book and complete them to explain uh, this behavior so for nh4 plus we are told that uh, the ph is less than seven right so if it is less than seven it is acidic and if it's a if it's acidic then it's a proton donor right so that nh4 plus is supposed to lose a proton it's supposed to lose one hydrogen right so here we're gonna have nh3 right instead of nh4 because now we have lost a hydrogen plus h3o plus right and then that's basically what you're being asked to do and then now let's pay our attention to uh, 7.2.2 uh, it is said to have a pH of greater than 7 what does that tell us it tells us that it is basic so it's supposed to gain a proton right so we're gonna have CH3 COOH right there we go we have gained a proton plus now the proton is coming from h2o right so the h2o now will be oh minus and then now um just to so the hydrogen uh, that nh4 plus loss came to h2o right so hence here we have h3o plus 